And my journey was very long because I don't know if anybody invested during the last like bubble, like real estate bubble, but we didn't know enough during, we knew enough during the last bubble that we stopped buying. So, but then when the bubble popped, we started buying like crazy and we bought a ton of rentals after the bubble popped. And we made the majority of our wealth after the last, during the last downturn. That's what you hear, like the wealthy make their wealth during the downturn. And that's where we accumulated a lot of our wealth was during the last downturn. So that was like 2008, we started scooping up a whole bunch of rentals and doing a whole bunch of flips. And then in 2013, I left healthcare for good. So since 2013, wow. I've just been flipping full time wow. and wholesaling and buying rentals. Mm. Yeah. Wow. So 10 years, huh? Yeah. So yeah. 10 years, 10 years it, it, it took you to realize that uh, this is yeah. it. I mean, listen, real estate is not a quick, you know, quick get rich scheme um, and no, like not at all. <laughs> Uh, you know, and, and success doesn't, ha it doesn't happen overnight as well. So, you know, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's, that's awesome. And it takes you a while to realize, like when I was, when we had that first private lender fund that deal, he then came to us and was like, Hey, if you want me to fund other deals for you, let me know. Cause I have money and like, this guy's not keeping my money busy enough. So I'd like to fund more deals. So we, our first private lender, like found us. So we we're like, okay, cool. So that guy had a certain amount of money. It was like 260 or $270,000. And at that time I was like, that is a ton of money. Like, I was like, I can't believe this guy's going to lend me this money. This is crazy. And so that 260 or 270, when you think about it is only enough to turn and do like three deals a year. That's it. There, it won't do any more than that. You can't turn them over fast enough. So in my mind, I was like, oh, well, so I can flip like three houses a year. That's cool. And that's all I did. Cause I couldn't, I wasn't at that phase in my life where I was like, had mentors all the time and I wasn't reading all the time. So I couldn't think big enough to think, okay, April, if you raise more money, you can do more deals. So I was just kind of like working my job, flipping three houses, like just kind of like, oh, this is cool you know? <laughs> and then I finally got to the point where it hit me and I was like, wait a minute, if I can flip, find more money, I can flip more houses. And if I can flip more houses, I can leave my job and just do this full time. And it only hit me because my husband, I was hired to basically like build a program for a college in like the healthcare realm. And my husband was like, you know, if you worked as hard on our flipping business as you did for this college, like you wouldn't have to work a job anymore. And the day he, he just said it in passing. And because he was like, you're working way too much, like 70 hours a week. And when the day he said it, like the light bulb went off and I was like, wow, if I could flip more houses, I wouldn't have to work for someone else anymore. And I could like make my own schedule. But I, for some reason, never thought that before, like the thought never crossed my mind. So like, I don't, I was never born with that like natural ability to like dream and think big. Some people are, I'm not like, I have to be around other people that are doing 10 times what I'm doing for me to be able to see myself actually doing that. You know, if that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So it took me a while to, to, to get to it full time <laughs> to like have that realization, I guess. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's great. Um, <laughs> um, so we're, we're going to we're gonna roll into the questions. Okay. Um, three questions that I, I have for you. Um, what is the perfect property to look for when flipping? Um, so to me, the perfect property is a property that's in the first time home buyer price range for your area. Okay. The reason I say that is because I lived through the last downturn. And if you can't, if something happens in the market and there's a sudden shift in value or a sudden shift in the number of buyers, you want a property that's in the first time home buyer price range because they're very easy to rent. Number one, they're the most desirable property out there, hands down the most desirable. So the buyer pool is huge for those properties. So you're not going to have trouble finding a buyer. And two, they can easily be turned into rentals and at least break even, if not cash flow for you. Whereas if you buy like a high end home, they don't cash flow very well as rentals. And if you buy a home in a really low income area, 
you tend to have more like problematic issues. So to me, it's that first time home buyer price range um, doesn't necessarily have to be in the most super desirable neighborhood, just not in like a D to F area. Sure. Um, something that would make a good rental and something that's not a full gut and rehab. Like I don't, I think sometimes, especially newbies that get into flipping, like see stuff on TV and might get excited about the prospect of like completely gutting a home, but don't fully understand that the more you have to gut, the more problems you come across and the more problems it causes. So the larger the rehab budget, the more padding you need to have in there because the more issues you're going to come across when you start ripping stuff apart and older houses, especially. So I don't know what it's like in South Florida, like in the Northeast in Pennsylvania, we have tons of old houses, like built in the 1800s and early 1900s. And man, you start ripping those things apart and it's like, <laughs> holy moly. Like you just never know Cast what you're iron, gonna, you know. And yeah. Love, you just never know what you're going to find. So, and we have basements, we have like foundation issues and um, so it's nice to say only do newer homes. I wouldn't say that necessarily. I'd just say if you're going to do an older home, not a full gut and rehab and don't take anything on as your first project, like a farmhouse, like, oh, I'm going to renovate this super cool, like farmhouse. I renovated one farmhouse. I was like, I'll never renovate a farmhouse ever again. <laughs> it's like nothing like HGTV. I'm like, this is a freaking yeah. nightmare. My contractors were like, we ripped up this floor and found this floor and this is crooked. And the whole kitchen's on a slant. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> it had a slate roof. It was like horrible. So just don't do anything like crazy weird, you know, stick to like your traditional home. Yeah. I've heard, I've heard horror stories about like historic homes. Like you're Yes. Saying. Yeah. Yeah. We're working on one of those now. We're not rehabbing it. Oh. I think we might end up selling it, like just wholesaling it to another investor who oh. specifically does historic homes. So like he's on our buyers list as like our historic guy. Like that's what he does. So we walked it yesterday and took it to him and we're like, let us know what you think. <laughs> Cause I'm not tackling that beast. And yeah. <laughs> yeah.